Hey, hello, Facebook friends and family on my profile page. It's Kizma from Illumination Academy on my business page. Hello and welcome. It is the happiness habits for success, day three. And for those of you that have been watching, I uh, love having you here. And I'm just going to recap days one and two because we have 10 straight days of happiness habits. Hey, Joyce, welcome. So day one, the happiness habit, and really for success, uh, because we've been talking about how the energy of happiness allows one to have just a more expanded feel, to have more energy to create the success in what you're working on, whether it's business or relationships or your body or just doing what you're here to do. And day one was about awareness, because to me, this very subtle piece of how you're being means that you then determine from this point on what habits you're actually following. Because the fact is, and I've said this every day, and welcome, hey Jenny, good to see you. And yes, thanks for typing in, Joyce, you're a rock star. So we have habits all day long, and some of these habits are serving us, and some of these habits are not serving us. So when we develop, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the habit of awareness, that's when we can begin to notice, to be aware, to be right here, to begin to see what is working and not working. Without awareness, we never will. So that was day one. Day two was <clears throat> the pause. Hey Faye, hey Kivani. The pause is not just any pause. The pause is the pause of wisdom, it's the pause of introspection, it's the pause of reflection. The pause is your new best friend. The pause will save you from saying something mean-spirited, reacting in a way that doesn't serve you. The pause will save you from sending kind of a not-so-great email and accusing other people of doing something. The pause will give you a moment that then you can ponder what's happening internally, how you're receiving information, how you're reacting internally, and then how you are responding. Because it's receive, react internally, and then respond. So the pause is your new best friend. And this pause can be as long as you need, it can be as short as you need, just let it be there. So awareness and the pause. Now today we're gonna to talk about inquiry because inquiry is the ultimate. And the reason it's coming is number three and not number one is as you can see, if you're not aware, you won't inquire. If you don't pause, you won't give yourself the space to inquire. I love that Joyce. Joyce says she teaches the, is it the pause in conflict resolution and communication trainings? It is big, that is so great. Thank you for putting that in. Habit three is inquiry. So some of you may be familiar with Byron Katie. She is a, a, such a great teacher and she talks about the work. I've never worked with her. I've read a little bit. I just know that she's awesome. Yet this whole question that she asks, is that so, comes from, at least, you know, nothing originates here. It all comes from up there. But there's a story that I actually learned in India and it was about a very ancient um, Chinese sage sitting way up on the mountaintop and in this village, and the mayor of the village, his daughter had something happen with a man that wasn't good. A man hurt her, abused her. Yes, this was many, many, many eons ago. Uh, it happened. So she was so mortified that she went home and her father's like, who did this? And she said, it was, that, it was that weird man on the hill. Well, her father, the mayor of the town, was so furious. He got all of these villagers together, trudged up the hill, pounded on the door, and the Chinese sage opened the door, and the mayor of the village said, you hurt my father, you're a horrible human being, said all these things. And the sage replied, is that so? And he shut the door. So there was this huge uproar, right? People were banning him, they wouldn't bring him food like they did, it was just uh, lots of drama. And then finally the girl felt so badly, she went to her father, the mayor of the village, and said it actually wasn't that man, 
it was the manager of your factory. And her father was like, why didn't you tell me I was going to have an arranged marriage for you two? So then he felt so doubly bad that he took all the villagers up the hill, knocked on the door and said, I'm so sorry, we made a mistake. You're the wisest man I know. And the Chinese sage said, is that so? Shut the door. Completely neutral. He knew the truth. And then he just asked the question to everyone, is that so? Now we can ask any question to ourselves, right? So the important thing, the important thing is that we're inquiring for us. The sage can ask anyone and we can as well, but I often see in times people take, yes, the work or something away from them instead of their inquiry. And our inquiry is the most important. So when you have awareness and then you have the pause, you then inquire. And the inquire can be something like, do I want to feel this way? Or is that person really angry with me or is it their stuff? Or the inquire can be, am I about to respond in a way that is effective for the result that I want? The inquire could be, do I go to this route or do I go that right? There's so many questions, yet if we do not enter the question mind, we just go. And there isn't a sense of really finding out what is, what is it that we want to feel, that we want to create, that we want to do, that we want to express. Does that make sense, everyone? Because if we don't know, we'll just start shooting from the hip and we'll maybe say something that works, doesn't work, or we'll assume something that is true or not true. So when we ask, when we ask any question, yes, exactly, we're, we're sussing out, Joyce, the internal reaction and not responding really fast. So for me, a lot of the times is, I'll even ask, wow, is it time for me to stop working today? because I can go really long hours, yet if I feel that I'm getting a little fatigued or maybe my mood's changing, I'll ask, is it time for me to stop working? It's that simple. Or if I'm feeling in a funk, do I want to feel this way? The answer is no, and then tomorrow we'll talk about how or what needs to happen to pivot when we're not feeling 100%. Right, but we've got to start with these three pieces. The awareness piece, the pause, which is your new best friend, and the inquiry. So I hope this helps. Put any questions below. Let me know as well, like what habits are you looking to break? You know, that's an interesting word. I would tend to say that we actually are required to replace habits. So when we think about breaking, there's also an energetic component. Something's gonna break but it's just like a desire. We can't push down a desire. We need to replace it with something higher. And because we are slaves to so many habits that we might not really be aware of consistently and constantly, replacing is so much better than breaking. Does that piece make sense? Is it's an important one. You reach for the higher. Great, Kim, awesome. Otherwise, you're like, oh, I'm gonna break this habit. It's like, not so effective. Oh, I'm going to replace this habit. Instead of watching loads of TV in the middle of the day, I'm gonna go for a walk and I'm gonna read a really good book. Replace. And then when you put that in your schedule, and we'll talk about this as we go down, but then it's the commitment, right? So let's start with awareness, with the pause and inquire and start to see what changes in your day all day long. All right, everyone, you're the best. Thanks for joining, and I'll see you tomorrow. Namaste.